Kylan Moore defied the odds as a kid growing up in Compton, who would become a prestigious Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. But his journey to get there was nothing short of miraculous. You have to dream dreams that are too big. You have to dream dreams that are so big, so unimaginable, so unfathomable, so unrealistic that they are destined to fail without divine intervention. In his book, A Dream Too Big, Kylan shares how his pursuit of hope and unflinching faith in God helped him overcome tremendous adversity and how you can too. Kylan joins us now. It's nice to have you on the program today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Your mother said that your family was sort of like the Huxtables, and then things just kind of exploded and fell apart, and you found yourself in Compton. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was just a stark contrast between what I experienced, you know, in the upper middle class area. Uh, my parents were married for nine years. Then after they divorced, you know, now you hear, you know, gunshots at nighttime and you're getting used to hearing, you know, rats and roaches in the wall. It was just, it, it was hard to deal with as a kid. Your mom was uh, um, an amazing lady. I mean, I mean, she had the ability to implant in your heart and in your mind the ability that you could be whatever you wanted to be, not where you were. That's a hard thing to teach a child. I think it is difficult, but it takes a lot of role modeling. Yes. So my mom, you know, despite all of her struggles, she went back to law school and she graduated from law school, you know, during this time period. So that set a certain type of example. And for me, you <laughs> yeah. know, I inherited that belief in myself and that faith yeah. from my mom. You know, you outline in the book how difficult it was to hang on to that belief, Kylan. You you had everything everything working against you, really. Right. I mean, your your safety in the area that you lived in, mm -hmm. the fear that you dealt with because of that. Even teachers, coaches, people who should have been inspiring and calling you to a higher place were sort of saying, who do you think you are? Right. How did you deal with that? I think, you know, I have to have that faith that, like, as I said, the same type of faith that I inherited from my mom, she always told us that we may live in the hood, but the hood does not have to live in us. So it kind of put me in a mindset that, you know, I need to see beyond these things. Yeah. I need to know that, you know, hurt people hurt people. Yes. So even if, it, if people are putting me down or, or telling me that I can't be something, I need to know that, you know, they probably went through things and they weren't able to become what they became yeah. for whatever reason. So I need to see beyond that. You had a kind of a gritty determination that worked on your behalf that you'd like to think every young person that lives in difficult circumstances would grab hold of. But you, your work ethic is unbelievable. I mean, as I'm reading your book, I'm thinking, I don't know that I would have done that if he's doing it. Did, there were times that you got discouraged. How did you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and say, no, we're going to keep going forward? Well, where I come from, quitting is not an option. You know, a lot of times I think kids can get in a difficult circumstance and say, yes. you know, I'm going to quit and I'm going to go back home uh, or go to mom's basement. Um, we didn't have a basement and there was nowhere to go. I would be sleeping on the floor in a garage. So I told myself that even if I quit or if I want to give up, there's nowhere to go to. So I need to find something within and find something above to hold on to in order to push me forward. How did you make college a reality? <laughs> a lot of a lot of hard work, a lot of mentorship, a lot of, you know, opportunities that I was afforded that unfortunately in a very underfunded, under-resourced uh, area, a lot of other kids didn't get those chances. You know, uh, you're, it seemed like your antenna were up all the time going, where's the opportunity? Where's the opportunity? <laughs> Aha. And and then you dug in with everything that you had, even even going into the NCAA Division One football arena. You know, you had an opportunity to be successful there for your parents to see you play. I mean, that was that was miraculous, really. <laughs> it really was. Just just as you said, I always had to have my antennas up about the next opportunity because I knew they wouldn't come, you know, come to my front door very often. I remember going to college and the first week of school, you know, I put on a shirt and tie similar to this and I went to every office on campus and I said, hello, my name is Kylan Moore. Do you have any opportunities for me to better myself? Because that, you know, I was coming from such a low position that I was like, you know, if someone could just teach me something, you know, anywhere on this campus, you know, I, I want to benefit from that. 
You know, when I read your book, I mean, I, I want to mention so that we get all of this in because I, you need to read the book. It's an amazing <laughs> book. But you went then from from your career academically on to become a Rhodes Scholar. I mean, that would have seemed impossible to most people, most people, mm -hmm. people who hadn't come from where you'd come from. What did you think when they announced your name? Um, when they announced, you know, Kylan Moore, uh, you are a 2017 Rhodes Scholar from district, uh, whichever district it was, yeah. I just immediately, I stood, I remember I stood still in place in my shoes and I just looked at my shoes and I stood there for about 37 seconds. And the reason why is that if I stepped forward to shake the woman's hand uh, of congratulations, that would be me accepting that anything was possible. And for 37 seconds, I wasn't ready to deal with that yet. Wow, but it was possible. What would you say to young people who might be watching, not even young people, there are people at any phase of life where life kind of beats you down and says, no, you won't. What advice would you give them to really stand up, strap themselves up again and head for the future? Right, I would say, you know, as difficult as the circumstances may be, I encourage anyone going through anything to hold, hold on to that faith in things unseen because I know for a fact that there is a brighter tomorrow. I have to believe this. And you're still pursuing your brighter yes. tomorrow. What's <laughs> next for you? You're getting a... PhD, you yeah. hope? And I'm applying to PhD programs in the fall, so my hope is to become a tenured uh, professor somewhere in studying sociology so I can help, you know, change some of these issues that I talk about in the book. Let's take back academia, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kylan's book is called A Dream Too Big. It's the story of an improbable journey from Compton to Oxford. It's awesome. You've got to pick it up and read it, not just for yourself. Pass it on to somebody else who needs it. Thank you. Thank Great you. story.